Hello everyone, Mr. Drosa here. Um, I know you haven't seen each other in a long time, so just welcome back. Uh, getting back into the school thing after a week off. Thought we'd start off with chapter 10.1 with a picture of Mr. Drosa, just so that you guys can uh, get over your Drosa withdrawals and uh, we can have a nice calm lecture and you can focus. So there you go, there's a picture of me. You can use it on your IG. Um, you can snap it, you know, whatever you want to do with that. I got a pretty, pretty fresh fade that day, so I think I'm pretty happy with that picture. So, good one, huh? All right, all right. Um, let's start off with uh, chapter 10.1, America's First Industrial Revolution. And we're specifically, our central question today is, how did new industries and inventions transform the United States economically, socially, and geographically? We're gonna be focusing on pages 328 to 335 in your text. Um, so read that over, you'll have a see an attached quiz on your classroom. So check that out and uh, that will be what you do with you when you take notes, obviously. Um, take a moment and check out the picture. Uh, do a see, think, wonder. You see what, tell me what you see. Uh, give you a moment and go ahead and do that now. All right. You should have uh, checked out the picture and saw some interesting things. Hopefully you saw that the men were working. Um, lots of men with aprons and suspenders. And a guy with a ladle over there in the corner. Lots of beards and mustaches. Hats and hard working, dirty work. I see like big pincher forks that are picking up some hot metal and some machinery. Hopefully you saw some similar things. Okay, let's get started with the first slide of the lecture. From farm to factory, changes in the economy, regions connect. All right, so what's a region? So a region would be like the United States would be divided into four parts, north, south, east, and west. And um, specifically at the start of our nation, we just mainly had north, south, and west. So this is what we're talking about, regions. And so we're talking about the regions and how they're connecting. So remember back then, uh, we saw in, maybe in our videos how difficult it was to um, move things and to move around and just get around basically because of uh, the forest being in the way people didn't have roads connecting and you had to go on ships that were dangerous and took a long time so um, those regions were difficult to connect to so there was some revolutions or changes that were major in the um, transportation and communication field that's going to open up America and allow it to connect and in that connection people are going to be able to make a mar uh, market and sell things in different regions. Um, for example, we can sell cotton from the south into the north. And so you're connecting those regions, and in doing so, you're making a revolution in the market. You're making you're a change from pre-industrial society to industrial society. Basically, you're changing from custom work and farm work to city, urban, factories, centralized locations and such such. And this is all turned about and the market revolution there you see is a red word for you to check out. Um, this all comes about um, from the Industrial Revolution. And the Industrial Revolution came about in England and when the English capitalists or, or owners of factories or owners of property uh, began buying machinery uh, that was newly invented and applying that machinery uh, to uh, their product and mainly it was in the textile industry we'll get on that in a second and doing so they located all the workers in a central place called the factory and having all those workers in a location um, in a central place became known as the factory system all right, so yeah, the factory system is a method of production in which a large crews of people perform work in one location. Um, it's using mechanized production, and the people, like I said, are unskilled. They don't have to be trained for long periods of time to know how to do it. And the first industry to move into the machine age, um, this, this era is called the machine age, because they're using machines, is the textile industry. The textile industry is basically clothing, it's fabrics. You can see here in the pictures that the lady is sorting threads and the threads are um, coming out of the machine after the yarn is being spun into threading. And then the threads will be taken over and put, made into clothes on another machine. The first person to develop this was Francis Cabot Lodge 
um, he took the idea from the English and he brought it over here and, and he uh, well I, he developed it with a guy named Slater and took it from a guy named Slater and developed it over here and so he founded a mill and his idea was to find someone that did cheap would work for cheap um, pri uh, wages and so uh, he understood that girls young girls wanted to get out of the house wanted to be on their own and independent and wanted a thrilling life off the farm so he decided that he would start using young girls which would be called the Lowell girls and um, he developed the dormitory system which he kept them in and we had a bunch of rules and uniforms and I know the girls nowadays would love it um, being totally ruled by a company um, they weren't allowed to date. They had to go to school at night after working all day. Um, but they liked it because it got them off the farm and out of the house and something new adventured. And then when they reached a certain age, they quit and usually got married. So it was for a way for them to get away from the household chores for a moment. Um, but after a while, the girls started to realize that they're being um, manipulated and sh should be getting more pay for the amount of work they were doing. So something called a strike was developed. Um, a strike is where you stop working basically and you, you force the owner to either fire everyone and start over or to pay you higher wages and keep the work going. And so the girls were the first successful uh, group of people to have a strike in America. Um, they, were struck, they struck and got better wages. But um, in the future, you'll see that uh, American labor is very difficult. There's a whole history of labor and unionizing. And, but this is the first step in American labor movement done by the Lowell girls. All right, moving on to the next slide. So we have a lot of innovations and inventions that come about that allow this new period to happen. So there's new manufacturing methods. Um, Eli Whitney developed something called uh, an idea of interchangeable parts, meaning a lot of parts are going to be pre-made and then put into a product, like let's say a rifle. So all the little parts are made by a machine and then the unskilled laborer can just put the rifle together really fast. Um, the parts can be taken from one rifle and put to another rifle. Um, that was a huge change because before you had custom work, like I said, a gunsmith would have to work on the rifle and if you couldn't change all the parts out, so if the part broke, you'd have to have someone make the right uh, part for that rifle especially. So this um, increased the rate of production for rifles and help modern warfare actually but then it, it moved into other areas of uh, production and allowed for what today is quick production of a lot of products um, you can see here that we have the steamboat was developed by Robert Fulton that's uh, using steam to push a steam engine to push the boat in the water with a paddle and it would go faster and carry more products and so that late made uh, products cheaper and easier and faster to ship the telegraph developed by Samuel Morris using a code it's like today's text messaging it sent uh, electronic messages on wires for quick distances and people it was dots and dashes you might be familiar with it um, people would then uh, decipher the code and then transform it or transcribe it into English and then be able to be have it read and then obviously it moves around the world and it can be developed in whatever language you move into um, and then the, the Reaper it's a developed by Cyrus McCormick it increases wheat production and changes the farming methods now you can c collect wheat and more wheat so if you can collect more wheat that means you can feed more people and that means populations can increase and so today we have mass populations because everyone can eat um, if we didn't have the food, then people couldn't have the kids, and then you couldn't. Um, people would starve, and then uh, you wouldn't have uh, the population sizes that we have today. So the Grim, the Reaper, I always want to call it the Grim Reaper. The Reaper, developed by Cyrus McCormick, moves us into that period. And here you hear, see a picture of a sewing machine, the first sewing machine, developed by si uh, Singer and Elias Howe, Isaac Singer and Elias Howe. Um, obviously you can sew faster if you have a sewing machine and now people can sew clothing and developed in factories and now mass produce clothing that was the uh, step the first step, second step after the textile industry turns the clothes the yarn into thread the threads are then sewn into clothing <clears throat> then we move on to roads and railroads on our third slide here and canals so we're overcoming obstacles remember if you look at the picture here america's a wild place uh, trees 
forests, or roads need to be developed. So we don't have any roads. And so the first road, is major road, like a highway that could connect major states, is uh, connecting Maryland to Illinois, and that's uh, Illinois, Illinois, and that's the national road. And that goes from Maryland, you can see, all the way to Illinois, and you can see the red line there, and it crosses about four states. And that's going to allow people to move faster and ship products faster, and so that's going to open up the west. The B&O Railroad connects Baltimore and the east with the Midwest, and you can see there that's the first locomotive developed. It was called the Tom Thumb. It's probably not what you think about if you think of a locomotive, but the man stood up there and drove the train. And so then that can go at 30 miles per hour, and 30 miles per hour is maybe like 200 miles per hour to us now. So it moved everything faster and quicker and heavier loads. So that's going to develop and again expand America quickly. And finally, the Erie Canal is developed. It goes from uh, Buffalo, New York, all the way to the Hudson River and then out to the Hudson Bay. And so that connects uh, the East Coast, New York, with the Midwest. And so those farmers are able to ship their products quicker and easier. Uh, basically, I think the product was charged $100 at first to ship it, and then it went down to $10 because of the cheap and easiness because of the Erie Canal. So you can see the farmers can make much more profit now. And uh, more product could be sold, so you're making more profit faster. So this creates an economic boom. Uh, new transportation methods created a great economic benefits, allowing the country to grow stronger. And finally, here's your summary. So, ooh, what's up? So your new industries and technologies transform the United States economically, socially, and geographically. The Dun, dun, dun. Market revolution allowed different regions to connect and develop a modern economy. The industrial revolution and the use of machinery was critical to the development of this new economy. The factory system used unskilled labor to develop products quickly. The textile industry was the first area in the economy to be developed in this way. Eli Whitney's use of you got it, interchangeable parts was the beginning of the machine age. Other new inventions such as the do 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 steamboat allowed for faster transportation and communication. The telegraph was developed by Samuel Morse and used coded messages to communicate over great distances instantaneously. The reaper allowed farmers to increase their wheat production. New innovations in which one is this one? New innovations in oh transportation. Sorry, new innovations in transportation methods created great economic benefits, allowing the country to grow stronger. For example, the Erie Canal cut down on price of shipping products to the east. Um, so that's today's lecture. Hopefully, you uh, dig your notes and you'll be ready for the test, which I'll post at some point. Or when we, I know that you're all ready to come back to school. So um, maybe we'll get that test. But I won't see you till May 4th at least. And who knows um, what the governor's saying. So the governor's saying we might not have school for the rest of the year. So hopefully you'll get a little education out of this and a little knowledge. And you can take that with you to high school. All right. Thanks. See you soon.